Okay, so this system is going to be a secure content managed system. We're going to have various different users accessing the system um, to do different elements of the website. So we're going to have overall admins that can do everything. We're going to have business people dealing with their own business information. We're going to have people uploading um, details of local attractions or local events. And we need to be able to authorize people to do one or more of those different parts of the website depending on their requirements and the requirements of the administrators. So people need to be in a security group specific to that particular thing that they are doing and on occasions they may need to reside in multiple security groups so that they can for instance have a business but also add local information. So Security is at the foundation of the whole system, so I'm going to deal with security right from the very start. It's important that we have everything encrypted in terms of passwords, because uh, anybody who doesn't encrypt a password nowadays really is asking for some pretty serious uh, trouble. We're going to be looking at two alternative types of encryp encryption. And I'm really at this stage just really going to mention uh, SHA encryption. That's... Uh, a secure, fully supported by, you know, US government, etc. type encryption that you have everything up to SHA-256, which defines the length of the encryption salt. Um, however, we won't be using that. We'll be also using something called Argon, Argon 2, which is currently acknowledged as the most secure environment that we can use for uh, encrypting our passwords. I'm going to be talking about the WAPLA inbuilt security provider because WAPLA has an inbuilt system for managing all of this very simply for us. And we're going to be talking about two important terms. One is about roles. And the role is basically what that person can do within the website. Um, so that is specific to an individual. And then we also have permissions. Permissions are different. Permissions are basically the roles that you require to have in order to do a particular action. So it is feasible that somebody needs to have more than one role before they have permission to do a particular action. It's important that we understand the difference on, of, in those because permissions are um, a little bit like you would have with uh, file permissions. If you say permission of admin and editor, then they do have to have both of those permissions. It's not either or, it is both. So let's look at the most basic way of doing authorizations within WAPLA. If we take a very, very simple users table, each user will get a unique ID, and that's what we will refer to in the future as their identity. And then we can have a username, or in this case, we're going to use an email address as the login name. Then we're going to have a password, which will be encrypted. And then we can optionally give them a role, let's say role of administrator. If we use that, then unfortunately, a person can only reside within one role. So what we do is we use two different tables. We take that role entity that we had in that previous screen uh, and put it into a separate table and then we link them. So our users table still has that unique ID and they have their username, which is in this case will be their email and they will have that encrypted password. But the roles will sit within a different table and each role will have its own unique ID. It's basic rules of um, relational databases. All tables should have a unique ID. And it's, that's primarily there for update and delete actions. It'll have a user ID, which is the, has to match the user ID within the user tables. And the, the security provider will automatically create a link between those two tables if we tell it to. And so that any users, let's say user one, that when they, the security provider looks for their permissions, it will look on the roles table and see which roles are allocated to user ID one. And then the role can simply be, uh, you can use a number, a letter, a name or whatever. I tend to use just single characters. 
So when we do that, if you look at a, an example here, say I am user number one, I have an email of me at me.com, a password, um, which will be a, an argon to a encrypted password. And let's say I've been allocated two roles. So you can see there our role IDs for those two roles, one and two, that will be sequential number generally. But they link to user ID one, and in each case, there, there is a, a role of A, let's say administrator, and a role of E, which will be an editor. And we can add uh, optional things like um, an active flag, so we can turn that role on or off. Although it's generally not that important because it's very easy to add these roles and remove them as an alternative. So what does that security provider do? It effectively does a, an inner join um, between the two tables. If you don't understand what an inner join is yet, don't worry, we'll be dealing with this in more detail. But basically what it means is it, it combines those two tables and creates a single table from the contents of those two tables by linking them on the user ID. So if we were to run that uh, query manually, which is basically what your security provider has done, you'll see that uh, user one, that's me. Um, I've forgotten on that screen to put my name in. Um, my email address, password, role ID. But it's important to see on that final one, the role, I have a record that says I am in role A, administrator, and a record that shows I am in role E, editor. So I am simultaneously in two roles at any one time. So if the security provider says, oh, is user one, an administrator it will find that record if it says is user one an editor it will also find a record there so that this is the way of allowing you to be in more than one role at a, simultaneously so let's now create those tables that we need in Wappler and then we can uh, add a little bit of dummy data if needs be and just uh, have the basics of our security system